Until now, we have been working with ideal scenarios where when you run the process, it will launch the application, enter the input value from currency to currency and so on. Now, what happens if something unexpectedly goes wrong? For example, let's say the website changed the position of this from currency field and if Blue Prism cannot identify that. Let us simulate the scenario and see what happens. I'll first close Internet Explorer and go to the Object Studio. Open Application Modeler and we will change the path attribute of the from currency field. I'll just put it as 11 and save the object. Now if we go to the Process Studio, click Refresh, Reset and Go. Okay, so you got the error, failed to perform step one in right stage, enter from currency, on page, enter from currency, no elements match the supplied query terms. So the process stopped abruptly and it did not end. Now this is something which we don't want to happen because now we are running the process from Process Studio, but in production, we always run from the control room. We'll talk about control room in the upcoming videos, but for now, you just need to understand that Control room is a place where you can run this process without opening the process studio and you can schedule and monitor the process from there. So a process should always end gracefully no matter what the circumstance is and it should not break while it runs. This is where we use these two stages, recover and resume. As the name suggests, the recover stage is used to recover the process and the resume stage is used to continue the process further. Let's drag and drop the recover and resume stage. And then I will link the recover to resume and from resume to end. Now if I try to link any of the other stages to the recover stage, it will not work because recover stage doesn't accept any incoming paths. Rather it's like a magnet that will attract any errors or in other words any exceptions on this page and when it passes the exception to the resume stage, the exception will be diffused and the process will end gracefully. So let's test this. I'll close Internet Explorer, reset, and we will step through the process to see what happens. Okay, now it reached this stage and if I step over again, You can see that instead of throwing an error, it jumped to the recover stage and if I step again, it will go to resume and from there to the end. This way the process ended gracefully. This is called exception handling. Now let's see what else we can do with the exception handling other than ending the process gracefully. We can actually capture what type of exception occurred and its details. In order to do that, I will add a calc stage between this recover and resume stages. And if you open the calc, you can see there is a section called exceptions and there are four different functions. If I select exception detail, you can see you don't have to provide any inputs unlike the functions we saw earlier. You can simply click paste and I'll create a data item to store this exception detail. I'll click OK and if I link the stages, close IE click reset and go. Okay, the process ended gracefully by going through the recover and resume stages and if you open this data item, you can see that the error or the exception detail is captured here. Now this will be very useful because you can maintain another Excel file called process execution log where this exception detail can be written. That way, even after the process gets completed, you can still see what went wrong and why it stopped. We'll talk about process execution logs and transaction logs in the future videos. I also want you to note that I added the calc stage between the recover and resume stages and not after the resume. As I mentioned before, once the exception passes through the resume stage, it'll get diffused and all the exception details will be deleted. 
So if you place a calc stage after the resume stage, there will not be any exception detail. Let me show you what I mean. I will delete these links and move the calc stage between the resume and end. And then I'll join the links. Now if I click reset and go, You can see that the process keeps circling between calc, recover and resume. The reason is that when the process passed the resume stage, the exception detail is already gone. So when it goes to the calc stage, since there is no exception detail and we are asking the calc stage to write the exception detail in this data item, it is throwing an error. Now when it throws an error, it is captured by the recover stage again and it passes through the resume stage and again the calc stage tries to write the exception detail which is not available so it goes back to the recover stage. So that's the reason why it's caught in an endless loop. So I'll reset and place the calc stage where it was before. Now let's say I don't want the default exception detail given by Blue Prism which is a very long message. Instead, I just want a more friendly message like enable to find from currency field or something like that. This is where the exception stage comes into picture. The exception stage will allow you to throw an exception deliberately. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to the enter from currency page in Object Studio, I can add the recover, resume and exception from here. I'll add a recover and resume. And at the end of resume, instead of ending it, I will add an exception stage. If you open the exception stage, you can enter the exception type and detail. I'll enter the exception type as system and the exception detail as enter from currency field not found. Note that I have given the exception detail within double quotes and the exception type without double quotes. That is because Exception detail is an expression while the exception type is simply a plain text. There is a checkbox which says preserve the type and details of the current exception. If we check this checkbox, you can see that the exception type and exception detail fields get grayed out because it is going to preserve the previous exception detail which is basically the default one that we saw earlier. We don't want that as we want to give a custom message. Moreover, it will not work in this scenario because we are placing the exception stage after the resume stage which means the previous exception details would have already got diffused when it reached this stage. So it will throw an error message. Alright, I'll leave this unchecked and click OK. Now if you run the process, when it reaches this stage, it will look for the from currency field and since it cannot find the field, it will throw an error which will be captured by the recover stage and pass through the resume stage and then an exception is thrown by the exception stage. Here we have a problem. Our intention is to have this exception transferred to the process instead of the default message. But instead this will go again into an endless loop because as soon as this exception is thrown by the exception stage, it will again be captured by the recover stage. So what can we do about it? Well, that's where the block comes into picture. Let me show you how it works. I'll select the block tool and draw a block around these two stages. Now what happens is the recover stage will capture only the exceptions within this block. Anything outside of this block, the recover stage doesn't care. So now if the exception stage throws an error, it has no further way out other than transferring this error to the process stage. Let's test this. I will save the object. Go to the Process Studio, Refresh, Reset, and Go. Okay, the process got completed and if I open this data item, you can see that it contains the custom message that we gave instead of the default Blue Prism message. Now let's see what happens if I add one more set of recover and resume stages. I'll drag and drop a recover, resume and an end stage. And I'll link them all. 
Now if I click reset, and go, you can see that the process again passed through the first recover stage we created. So basically if you create any additional recover stages, they will all be redundant and the process will take only the first recover stage we created. In the next video, we will discuss about creating pages in Process Studio and see a phenomenon called exception bubble.